for me, corporate governance, at least the corruption, uh, is a part of corporate governance, and I'll weave that in a bit later on in my talk. But I think one of the things that uh, we hear a lot about, of course, is corruption and Africa. They seem to be often spoken of in the, uh, almost in the same sentence. I think uh, all I can say, I don't think you should draw any comfort from it necessarily, but um, certainly it's not an issue that by any means is unique to Africa. I could sit here and regale all sorts of weird and strange examples from the US to the Far East to elsewhere in the world. So I don't think it's a problem that I think, as uh, Bobby Godsell said yesterday, I think it's a, sometimes a problem that unfairly labels Africa. It's just unfortunately at times Africa does itself no good with some of, the, some of the issues that take place. But I, as I said, when I make my comments and they appear to be directed at Africa, that's purely because of the topic of the conference and uh, in terms of trying to cast the discussion in a way that might form a useful debate uh, when, uh, when, when our presentations are finished and open for discussion. Most of my background has been in the private sector. Um, um, and so therefore I, I tend to preface my comments in a presentation like this uh, to try and look at it practically and a pragmatic way. In other words, there's a lot of good things being done and said theoretically, but the real issue is in practical terms, what does that really mean? What's going to make people change and why should they change? And it always reminds me some years ago uh, in a discussion in a country I won't mention where a gentleman got up and said, until... until being ethical pays more than being corrupt. I'm going to remain doing what I'm doing. And he said that in a very public audience, which was probably as full, of, as, full as every seat in this room, and everyone cheered and clapped. So we got a challenge. Um, and you'd be surprised which country that is too. Um, they don't rank high on the corruption scale, but uh, certainly it was a, a telling statement. I think the other point I want to make is uh, one that I'll leave for discussion is there's endless uh, initiatives taking place, some of which I'll refer to in my discussion, and there's, almost, there's an almost limitless number of conventions and declarations on co corruption, but it doesn't seem to me, at least in my personal observation, that we're making much progress. It's not to say we're not making progress, but uh, it worries me that uh, we're still grappling with how to really get this thing to work. Though in OECD terms, corruption really comes in many guises. It covers everything from bribery to extortion to fraud to trafficking to embezzlement. Uh, they include in, in their classification of corruption issues of nepotism, cronyism, as all being manifestations of corruption. So when I talk about corruption, I'm really talking of it in its broadest sense because there's all different elements of it which no doubt to also inform some of the conventions and initiatives uh, that have taken place in, in the different fora internationally. I think one first important definition of corruption is that there is, there is a supply side, that's the person who pays the bribe, and there's the demand side, the one who receives the bribe. There's no way that uh, the one can exist without the other fundamentally. As, com as, as uh, common sense as that might seem to some, I think one of the legitimate criticisms of the Transparency International some years ago was there was a lot of focus on the, um, essentially on the, on, in terms of the Corruption Perceptions Index, very much on the demand side, but very little emphasis on supply side. As, as you probably well know, that has been addressed in recent years. I think also corruption is often viewed as a social and moral issue, but it's certainly an economic one, and that is really what concerns me the most is the economic effect that uh, corruption has. It creates inefficient and uncompetitive e uh, economic systems. It imposes additional costs on doing business. And in many cases, it even threatens the democratic institutions through destabilizing the political process, uh, which can at times also lead to conflict. At the corporate level, corruption really corrodes corporate culture and undermines the quality of management. The real challenge, of course, is how to address the issue in terms of how you, see, how you respond to the institutional shortcomings in both the private and public sectors, that, uh, in, 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 in basically in most countries in the world for that matter. I mean, if you look at the measure of corruption, at least in, in the African context, according to the African Union, 
uh, corruption costs the continent about $140 billion annually, which I gather is, is estimated around about 25% of the total GDP of sub-Saharan Africa. Can you imagine if that money was used for more productive purposes uh, and therefore was able to negate and settle the endless loans that come from institutions like the IMF and World Bank? I think as we, it's accepted that corruption, and I've made my earlier point on the African continent, is significantly widespread. And of the 47 countries surveyed, 31 scored less than 3 out of 10, um, which really, uh, in, in terms of the Transparency International Index, signifies corruption as basically endemic and rampant. Therefore, uh, it li lies in a huge problem. Only three countries scored above five, uh, which were, interestingly enough, Botswana and Mauritius and Cape Verde. Um, <coughs> South Africa fell into the others. Um, I think one of the, in the recent uh, uh, con uh, per, um, transparency report, I think, again, they emphasize one of the challenges around corruption is its propensity to create to, or to undermine political stability and particularly a government's capacity to provide effective basic services in sectors such as education, health and water. And I think there's quite a lot of discussion yesterday around what is the obligation for corp uh, companies to really address a, a measure of social responsibility, particularly in the absence of governments and ability themselves to provide those services, which then leads a lot, oftentimes to the tensions that you then get between communities and particularly multinationals because of this expectation that they, at, uh, their presence warrants some form of social dividend uh, in terms of their license to operate in that community. Of course, corruption really impacts a number of areas. One is resource misallocation in terms of the lack of productive use of funds that are diverted for purposes other than, they, than their intended purpose. Clearly, it has a huge impact on investment, as we often see, particularly in Africa. Um, there, there's a reduction in competition, efficiency and innovation, mainly because of the problem that dishonest, uh, honest people who are trying to do an honest job really get crowded out the market uh, or actually end up having to play the game. Of course, that has a he heavy impact on, the, on employment. And as we know, uh, employment uh, in Africa is such a critical issue as it is in many other parts of the world. And it exacerbates poverty. 